Well, hey guys and gals. Just finished up this guitar. It uh, had a crack in the uh, bottom side right in here. Uh, it's visible. I didn't, uh, I didn't drop fill it. Uh, I glued it and I put uh, cleats inside. If you'd, uh, if you'd like to see that process, uh, stick around. We'll, uh, we're going to go right into that. Hi folks, it's uh, Dane here at Joni Guitars. It's been a while since I've uh, recorded anything new. I've got some stuff and kind of archived and I've been uh, putting some of that stuff up every so often. Um, just been busy, been really busy actually. Um, been uh, really sick too. So I've been really busy and being really sick and I haven't gotten anything done so I'm still really busy. Uh, got uh, some projects that um, should already be down the road, um, and uh, they're not. This this one actually just just came in, and uh, it's a uh, one of the uh, M18, I believe it. Let me look at here. D no D15 M. Yeah, so it's all it's all mahogany. They've got a uh, I don't know if that's real or not, but they got a plate over the the neck block here, so. Uh, usually when you see that it means that there's a bolt-on situation not that I think that really makes a huge difference uh, the problem with this guitar a fellow said he was uh, just sitting playing and he uh, I think it might have been resting on his keys or something and I don't know if he might have been sitting playing laying on it leaning on his keys but you got to crack um, oh let me do this maybe that will help Not sure. I know my flashlight is over on the other bench, so. Oh, I guess I could turn some lights on over here. See, I'm, I'm all out of practice. Yeah, I'm holding the thing up in front of my monitor now. I can't tell. Where's it at? Oh, there it is. You gotta go the right way. Going the wrong way. It's right here. So you can't. You can see the scrape-looking part, but right above it. Or, yeah, right above that scrape, there's a there's a crack. It's going from where that finger is down to where that finger is. And that middle finger is not it. Anyway, so that's about three inches. Um, and, uh, I'm going to get the strings off it, get inside. Um, look in there right now and see that it has not been repaired or patched. I had another one of these exact guitars in here with the same issue uh, with the crack side and uh, I thought maybe the guy had sold it and this is where it went and that maybe it had recracked or something but no this is this is that guitar. I'm gonna have to go get my flashlight. It looks like it ends Yeah, there's a the uh, popsicle stick down the down the, the side kind of brace right there. That's right where that one ends at. So if I can get that to flex back together, I'll put a I'll put a cleat on the on the forward end of it toward the neck. All right, let me uh, let me get set up here. Get some get the strings off it. But I'm just uh, you know I just. Uh, rabbit trail myself all that. I just happened to look and see how low the saddle looks on this thing which is very low and I thought I'd check the action and see where that's at and the action's at 664 so it's it's really my opinion it's at the top of the range um, yeah it's at four on the high E and six on the, the fatty and what's the just check on the relief the relief's not bad, it's a little high. We could definitely put a little, uh, straighten that neck out a little bit and help help that, that action out with, you know, I mean, you know, that's not how you adjust your, your action, but it definitely has a part to play in the action, so 
why not take advantage of that? All right, I'm going to go get my stuff. Pull the strings off of this. A lot of people scream when they see this, but you gotta understand, I've tried all the different string pullers and I don't even, I got one laying here somewhere. Oh, here's one. Here's both of them actually, with an inch of dust on them. I try, I bought, I bought a, one of these little, I bought two of these little things. Where's my camera at? There we go. Um, supposed to slide it up on the pin. It dented the bridge on uh, on a guitar. I'd never done that with uh, wire cutters. You can, or diagonal cut, you can just, just barely squeeze that pin. You don't make any, any kind of mark on the pin whatsoever. It's, it's not a thing. So many people, and I'll get notes in this one, screaming at me about how much damage I could do with a pair of wire cutters. And I don't know that I've ever had a negative comment on it, uh, personally, but I've read others. And uh, those, are, those are people that either have no finesse or people that have never worked on a guitar and don't have any idea what they're talking about and they just like to get on your comment and pop off. Makes them feel like they know something. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's the, it's the 2022 me. I'm just going to rant and talk crap about everybody the entire time the video is running. Maybe I'll get some views that way. Hey, who knows? Nobody's watching these. Very few of you. I got about six faithful people. I appreciate you. Maybe I should go to Patreon so that Patreon rather, so that people can pay money to watch videos that ought to be free. All right, I just rolled those up so that they don't. Jump out of the trash can, poke me in the eye later. Uh, I will be, um, I will be cleaning and oiling the fretboard and all that along with the bridge. Um, this pattern in this mahogany is so even. I thought it was one of the plastic laminate guitars when he first brought it to me. Out. Nothing sounds loose. And uh, I do this every time I pull the strings off a guitar, whether it's a setup or, you know, a repair of some sort. I check to see if the tuners are, are tight. Actually, I think these are just, no, these are two whole. These are just hexagon tuner bushings, so I don't want to turn those because they're not actually nuts. That's wild. That feels like that's right under the kerfing. So that crack is right along the edge of the kerfing. So uh, I am going to put a mirror in there and check it out and make sure that's exactly where it is. Um, and it's pushed pushed in so I got to get inside and push out on it see if I can get these to line up again and trying to get my mirror up from behind all this stuff first thing I'm gonna do is look at look at the side crack which I can't really see because it is right on the edge of that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try to push and see if I can manipulate it. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the braces while I'm in here. I should look this up to find out how old it is. My batteries are fluttering. Bridge plate doesn't look too bad. It's got a little bit of splintering where it was drilled. Um, I don't know why 
I will while I'm in here. I don't know why they can't just take a half a second and stick their hand in there with a little piece of sandpaper and knock those, those little chips off. I don't think this is terribly expensive, Martin, but it still says Martin on it. At least it looks like they sanded the braces. Well, on the top anyway, some of these. Well, okay. I'm, flashlight's not cooperating, but it looks good in there. All right, let's see if we can... Guarantee you that my wrist is not designed to bend that direction. Trying to push in on this so that it will pull away from this part and then push it all up back together. Uh, this is not wanting to move, of course, because that's right where the, the curving is. It's extremely deep curving. Now, I actually. It is under there a little bit. Okay, the ends aren't too bad. This end is. It's in by the cleat, the, the side brace is. So that side brace is right, right here. It's actually. Pushing up on it, this the bottom side of the crack is actually proud of the top, but it's not staying there. So, and I am actually a little way off of that. I couldn't see it, but I'm, I'm farther down than that. Um, that curfing, I should call it lining. Actually, is this one curved? Yeah, this is curved. What was I looking at? I was looking in something the other day. Oh, it was a tailor. Did a setup for a guy in a tailor, and it was. It was solid linings. I thought that was pretty cool. That was a real, I, I don't remember the number series of the thing, but it was a great sounding guitar. It didn't have any back bracing in it. I've, Taylor guys will probably tell you what it was. Okay. You know what? I bet that if I put magnets on that, because that is perfect right there. There's no, I just squeeze it together. Wow. Now all I gotta do is put some glue on there and do all that. Yeah, it slid back in a little bit. I'm wondering, I bet if I put magnets on that, I'll be in good shape. I'm going to uh, shut the camera off, round up my stuff. Okay, zoomed you in a little bit. Now here it goes, I'm pretty sure you're not going to really be able to see what I'm doing. I, maybe on a larger screen you can. I, I know I can't see it in my phone monitor. Uh, I'm just going to dampen this up a little bit. Which will probably fight me because it will swell the wood up. So just put a little water in there. Very little. And I'm going to put 
flew into it. Now I could have, and this has been a very, you know, it would be a valid fix, but I'm just reluctant to do it. I don't know why. Uh, but I could get this all lined up dry, put magnets on it, and then run super glue into it. And that would really be a very perfectly valid fix. Um, it would hold it, especially uh, if I'm going to put cleats on it and all that besides. So I'm going to put a little I'm put a little in there to thin that glue out a bit. Put some more of that fish glue in there. Okay, now I have to uh, get in here and manipulate this like we were doing before. So I'm going to push down. Okay. I'm going to keep going in and out with this a little bit just to kind of hopefully get some glue into that into that crack. So now that it's above it, now it's even. Oh wow, that's just too nice. I hate to keep tweaking it in case. All right, I'm gonna take this magnet and its partner right here. Oh, not in the camera yet. And I'm gonna put this one inside. You can feel on the inside with my thumb, it feels very even, just like the outside is feeling very even. I'm gonna slide this thing right up against the kerfing and right up against this side brace here. And I'm going to put that on there and that just basically lined right up with my inside magnet. So perfect. Then you know what I'm I'm making this look really easy. So don't be fooled. This is difficult. I am being facetious. Uh, if you have some experience and you know what you're shooting for, and you've probably already done this on another guitar, and actually, I see you grab the other magnet, and act, and actually uh, crack the side more because uh, you have to kind of take a shot at doing it that way when you're getting this stuff all lined up. All right, I am very happy with the way that's all lined up. I'm really um, hoping that I got enough glue in there. I will probably go to the inside and uh, wick some, some super glue in from the inside just to make sure that, that I have plenty of glue in that crack. And I will be back and we will put a cleat here out at the end of the crack to keep it from uh, going any farther. And then uh, we'll see whatever touch-up might uh, be deemed necessary here. I think a wax um, color, color pencil will probably be all that's required to make that blend in. And Well, we're back in here, folks. I uh, got the, uh, I think you probably saw that in the last video, uh, so, or the last portion. So I got the magnets, got the uh, the side crack glued. Um, I made some cleats last night. Well, actually, it was the night before. Made some cleats, uh, put that inside, and see where we can put those, up. you can see them. There we go. So just a couple... Uh, little pieces of uh, mahogany uh, cut off of uh, this. I had a, about a 40 inch piece of this. It was a side rip off of the uh, uh, mahogany uh, base sides that I uh, bent for the uh, the 335 base. And uh, this is just one one rip or one piece of that. It's 16th inch thick. So, so these cleats are 16th of an inch or thereabouts. I just take a block, a sanding block, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but I just sand the edges tapered all the way around, kind of like the start of a pyramid. And, uh, and what we're gonna do is the same thing we did glue in the crack, um, a, little, a little different. And I'll, I'll go ahead and pull these magnets up first and then I'll explain what's going on with that. Oops. 
magnets like to grab each other. No. Okay. You get your fingers in between those things and they hurt. They pinch you good. So. All right, I have, as you've seen, I have the taped face magnets and, uh, and then the non-taped, which uh, I will leave down here on the bench where um, I don't have to worry about them grabbing anything. Ah. And I know they're paired now because, you know, the magnets, if you get them paired incorrectly, they push away from each other. So here's another... Oh, I, you couldn't even see that one. I assume because you could see, because I could see it, you could see it without looking at the camera. Okay, so the other one. Now, let me explain. I'm going to um, take a little teeny bit of two-way tape, and I'm going to stick it on the magnet. Then I'm going to stick the cleat uh, face side, which means the tapers are facing down. So that when I'm done, it's in the correct orientation. Then I make, tighten this thing up so that it doesn't swivel on me when I'm in there. Because I like to orientate these magnets a certain certain way. Not, not the magnet, the uh, patch. Uh, so that should be snug enough now. So what I'll do is uh, I'll figure out where my grain orientation is on the cleat. I don't want it to be the same orientation as the side. So if the grain on the side is running, you know, sideways, I don't want to put the cleat in sideways. I'm going to want to put the cleat in either cross grain, square into it, or I'm going to want to put it in on a, like a diamond. And I typically choose the diamond orientation, okay? I got this thing turned around. So if I measure this little piece, it measures, oh, I'm over here measuring, measures 7 sixteenths. Um, if I measure it diagonally, it measures 5 eighths. So uh, if I can, if I push it right up into the kerf, that's going to give me quarter inch past. So I think I'm going to try to do is just center. I'm going to put the outside magnet, of course, where I want it. And then when I put this on the inside magnet, it will pull it into right where it needs to be. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go get my sticky tape. Sticky tape. That's kind of stupid. It's all sticky. I mean, of course, two-sided tape. Sticky on both sides. All right, so okay, yeah, I just ripped a piece of tape off, and I'm going to rip it in half again and leave it right there and put this one on here. Now, like I said I want to put that on the the top side, so the top side where the bevel starts. I want the pointy side on the guitar, uh, and so I am going to. Just stick that down there. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really trying to burnish it in with my finger here. Um, and I get the goo, get the backing off. Backing is off. Um, I'm going to uh, stick this on the top on the top edge of the magnet rather than in the center because if I put it in the center, this magnet's going to push me off the kerfing below where I want this to be. So I'm going to set it up diagonally, and I'm just going to use there's a flag here on this. I'm just going to use the flag as the down. So if my flag is pointing straight down, then I know that my um, my orientation on my um, my magnet, my uh, 
keep calling it a patch. I can't think of the right word. Anyway, this little thing, little piece of wood. So now I have that um, stuck there on the top half. You can see it's diagonal because uh, the flag. Yep, so it's right on diagonal. So when I get that in there, I just have to make sure that I keep it on diagonal. And I can do that. Now I'm going to put some glue on it. And looking at the, I'm going to start farthest away from the sound hole, so I'm not trying to work over myself with these magnets. And these magnets, like I told you before, they really want to grab each other. So there's the crack. The end of the crack is pretty much right at the uh, that popsicle stick brace. So I'm going to run this first cleat like right out here in the middle of this. So that's where my first magnet will go. Then my second magnet will go here at the end of it. And that will keep it from, from spreading out. I, uh, I'm going to have to get up inside here and look and see if that popsicle stick is stuck really well here. Uh, whether it is or not, I will probably uh, get myself some thinned out high glue and try to brush that along the side and under the edge of the, the, the existing brace so that I make sure I have some contact there. Understand? All right. And this is one of those things I'm going to have to just get it down in my lap where I can see what I'm doing. And you may not be able to. And Okay, we are looped and ready. I got a puddle on there. Well, I'm always missing the camera. There we go. Got a puddle on there. And I've got my uh, my backup magnet. All right, so I want this thing right here. It's going to go in just like that. Now, once I get my hand in here, my bets are off, right? Okay, I'm going to get on the very end of this. Put this, yeah, these are going to be right on top. I might just do one and come back in and get the other one. All right, that went right on there. I'm centered on my, on my line. Let me get a mirror in here and see. It looks like my flag is poking straight down. Again, turn this around. Yeah, I will. You know what? I've got time over the weekend here to get this uh i'll make time to get this actually oriented correctly i mean to set another magnet in because i i don't want to have by the time i get another magnet it's going to be so close together i'm not going to be able to be sure that i got things where i wanted them okay i'm going to take a second Rotated that just to fuzz. All right, I think we're good. They're close. The um, bottom line is, uh, it's really hard to tell. I 
think you're certainly right there. So I don't want to try to do this with another magnet right there next to it. Anyway, let's see. Yes. Yep. All right. Good. I think we're cool. All right. I'm going to catch you loose and then um, I'll bring you in for the next one. Turn this thing around. And don't want to lose that. That cleat. Cleat, that was the word.